in this video, I want to show you how to build your own home lab server and self-host services with it. I've previously covered setting up NordVPN's MeshNet with different services and self-hosting hardware and software at LAN. Now, let's put that knowledge to use. I'm going to turn this terminal PC from Lenovo into a fully-fledged home server. I choose to go with this specific model for a couple of reasons. First, it's budget-friendly. This specific PC cost me the equivalent of $100. It supports an 8th generation Intel i3 CPU, 8GB of RAM, and 128GB of storage. It also has a PCIe slot, which can be used for expanding the storage or networking capabilities. Additionally, a Windows 11 Pro installation was included in the price. Speaking of Windows, I want to keep this video relevant to most, so I won't use Linux in this tutorial. However, all the software required for this is also available for Linux-based operating systems. Keep in mind that the Pro version of Windows 11 is required because the home version does not support virtualization. Before we begin, remember to change your power settings so that your home server doesn't go to sleep. All you need to do is head over to Power Options and change your current plan settings. Make sure to set it to never sleep. All right, let's move on to a software called Docker, which helps you create and manage virtual computers, kind of like creating small separate workspaces inside your computer. To make this happen, you first need to install some extra software that can run these mini computers on your Windows computer. One popular option is called Windows Subsystem for Linux, or WSL. Here's where it might sound a bit complicated, but it's not as scary as it seems. WSL lets you run a type of Linux, another operating system like Windows, right inside your Windows computer. So even though it feels like you're using Windows the whole time, you're secretly using a bit of Linux behind the scenes to help Docker do its job. Let's start by installing WSL on your computer. You can do so by opening up the Windows command prompt in administrator mode and typing in WSL dash dash install. Once the installation is finished, restart your computer. Now that WSL is installed and ready, you can head over to the official Docker website, download the installer and open it. Give it some time to install and restart your computer one more time. With everything ready, all you have to do is create your first containerized service. I'll cover spinning up a Jellyfin container because it's a really popular service. First, you'll need to create a couple of folders, one named Jellyfin, and then inside this folder, subfolders called config, cache, media, and finally media2. Let's change one more setting that allows me to see extensions for known file types. When you set Jellyfin up in a container, it needs a few places to store and organize files. That's why you create those folders. They're like different drawers to keep your things tidy. Finally, create a new text file called compose.yaml. This file holds the configuration for the container that we'll be putting Jellyfin inside. The most important thing in this file is the image field that points Docker to the correct image of Jellyfin. Think of it as a cookie cutter that you use to cut the same shape over and over again. Next up, volumes. They're like shared access. They tell the containers which parts of your main house they can reach into and use. In other words, volumes allow you to share parts of your computer's hard drive with the containers. Volumes tell Docker which parts of your disk drive are shared between your operating system and the containers. Last but not least, there is start policy. If, for whatever reason, your container was to crash, Docker will try to restart it. Let's adjust the YAML file. Make sure not to add any additional spaces because these files are sensitive to every single space you add. Change the volumes to reflect the folder structure and make sure to save the file as .yaml. The file should look something like this. Now, right-click an empty space inside the folder and select Open Terminal. All you have to do now is type in Docker Compose, dash dash file, compose.yaml, app, dash dash detach, and hit Enter. This will grab all the information with the Compose file and create a Jellyfin container based on it. And that's really it. You can now access your Jellyfin through any web browser. Type in this address and hit Enter. I have set up MeshNet on my phone and my server, and I have also set up correct permissions. All I need to do is use my server's MeshNet IP address or Nord name, followed by colon 8096, and head to the website. However, hosting a Jellyfin instance is just the beginning. You can self-host 
countless other open source services on your home server. My personal tip is on how to find the composed files. All you have to do is type in the name of your self-hosted service, followed by composed in Google, and look for the results. This way you can quickly find all the ready-made recipes for containers. And that's it for the video. Be sure to let me know what kind of services you host on your home server in the comments section. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more.